I am your host, Ann Tipton, and I am here with Jeannie Stith Mawinney from yourcolorguru.com. Hi, Jeannie. I'm so <laughs> glad to have you on the show. Hi, Ann. I am so, so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So, before we get started on the interview stuff, Jeannie does the coolest thing. She um, <laughs> helps people pick their colors, which we'll talk about in a minute. But Jeannie did my colors recently, and it is so awesome. So I just want to show you at home. This is the color chart that she did for me of all of the colors that I can wear. And you'll notice that my signature navy that I've been wearing on every show that we've recorded so far is actually one of my colors. Hallelujah. So Yay! <laughs> um, so this is so fun. So Jeannie, tell us a little bit about how you got into doing this. Well, I had my colors done years ago, probably 10 years ago. And it was such a game changer for me. And I was just like, this has made dressing so easy. I feel like I look better. I feel more confident. It's way easier to put outfits together because I'm kind of committed to one season. This is like a seasonal color analysis that I do. And I just thought this, you know, people didn't know about it. I was telling all of these girlfriends about it and none of them knew it even existed. And in fact, the woman who did my colors was a retired, she was an image consultant She and she was retired. And it was so hard to even find her. I was like, why is no one doing this? It's so useful every single day. And so I just, I started, I, it was about a year and a half ago. I just got all of a sudden I got like obsessed with it and I started practicing on friends and I started researching. I did like five straight months of research on color theory, color analysis, how to tell, you know, undertones in people's skin, how to see the highlights in people's hair or like the undertones in people's hair, um, looking at people's eyes and the flex in their eyes and like all of the details that help us choose the best colors. And I was just fascinated with it. And so I, one day I just kind of started and the ball started rolling and here we are. <laughs> so you told me, I didn't know that this was a thing that people did in the 80s. This was a very yeah. popular trend back then. Yes. And I mean, my system is different than the system they did in the 80s. Um, but it was very, very popular. Um, in fact, I feel like a lot of um, people my age, I'm 42, but I feel like a lot of people my age, like our moms all had this done. And, uh, but then I started talking to people who are my age and like none of them, they either remember their moms having it done, but like none of them have had it done. And I just decided to develop my own system. And I, I certainly tried to improve on everything that was out there. And um, these palettes I've created are exclusive to Color Guru. So it is its own thing. But, um, you know, the, the color analysis, um, the basic theory is, is similar. Cool. cool. Yeah. So, so walk us through, you, you started in a very cool career that most of, <laughs> I mean, you said a lot of people wanted to, to do that career, which is voice artists. You're, you're yes. Voice artist. Yes, I was a voiceover artist. I, well, I still am a voiceover artist. I, I, um, now it's a little nicer because I kind of can pick and choose which jobs I want to take. But um, the last 19 years for me have been uh, a voiceover artist. I went to school for theater. And so that was a really easy, easy transition. Like I found I could use my theater degree, but, you know, not be sort of waitressing on the side and you know like I was doing when I was actually doing live theater and so the voiceover world was was very kind to me and um and I had a wonderful experience but you know two things happened first of all I just got this intense energy for um color guru all of a sudden uh which is which is my brand color guru and um I got this intense excitement for it and I was like, okay, like I'm going to try this and maybe it'll start small and sort of grow. And that's exactly what's happened. And um, so now I'm kind of phasing out of, of the voiceover world, but it was certainly, you know, it was certainly my career for 19 years. You know, I did a lot of audio books. I did a lot of, um, I did a lot of uh, commercials. Um, I was the voice of the Sprout Network for 10 years. So I was like the, the voice of um, all the messages from the network were me. Um, and Sprout was a great network. It was, it's a preschool cable network. Uh, and so, yeah, but it was interesting. Like the last five years, people kept asking me, like, how do I get into voiceovers? How do I get into voiceovers? And I was starting to sort of lose my 
zest for it. I knew it was time for something new and didn't know for a while exactly what that would be, but I'm so glad it turned into the colors because it's just really exciting every day. I love working on it. Yeah, so you're the perfect example of somebody who had a good steady thing going and is gradually making the transition to doing what you want full time. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That's so perfect. So yeah. perfect. When we, when we spoke earlier, you said that your mom wanted you to study biology, but you decided <laughs> to go theater instead. She wasn't like set on biology specifically, but she basically said like indirectly, she told me many times don't study theater or like, oh, you could do community theater on the side as you're a teacher or like mm -hmm. as you're something stable. And the thing I liked most sort of besides theater and English was biology. <laughs> and so I was like, all right, I'll just kind of be a biology major. I was not, um, when I was in high school, I was certainly not strong-willed enough to kind of go against what my mom thought was best. And then luckily, uh, my dad sat me down one day and was just like, hey, I noticed that you know, you've been doing community theater since you were 10. You try to be in every play you can be in. Like when I was in high school, I was a cheerleader for a while. And then it came time to do the spring play and I couldn't do both. And I like quit cheerleading, like no questions asked. I was like, I am a theater person. This is for me. And, um, you know, so all these decisions I had made and my dad basically recognized that. And, um, and he was a professor himself. He was a college professor. And so it was really great to hear from him. He basically just said, you know, I really want you to study whatever it is you love. And I believe you'll find a path from there. And he said, you know, half of the kids who graduate don't end up doing their majors anyway. So like, just see where it goes, you know, and it took me to this wonderful career in voiceovers, which I truly loved for a very, very long time. And I'm so grateful. I feel like that was one of those moments in my life that was just such a gift, you know, to have somebody really see really see me for who I was and really support me for who I was and not worry about what the future, you know, would bring, but just kind of support my, my passion. That's, that's beautiful. And, and one of the things we talked about is um, another big supporter in your life who helped you go through a bad breakup and yeah. was kind of the catalyst for what you're doing now, which was your aunt. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> my aunt who, Basically, uh, she's pretty direct. <laughs> and um, I had, yeah, I had just been through a pretty terrible breakup. This was about 10 years ago when I got my colors done. My, my, the, re the whole way that came about was my aunt came into town to visit me. Um, I was heartbroken, devastated. Uh, I really thought that this, this person was my best friend. I thought he was going to be the person I was going to marry. And um, all of a sudden it was just over and, um, it was like the saddest time in my life. I remember feeling like pretty depressed and pretty, just not very interested in life. She came to visit me and we went out shopping and I was picking some things out and she basically said like, you're picking all the wrong colors for you. <laughs> and I was like, I didn't even know at that point there were right colors. I just kind of thought, well, there are colors I like and colors I'm drawn to and colors that I'm not drawn to. And she's like, you need to get your colors done. And I was like, what, what does that even mean? Like <laughs> get your colors done. And she's like, no, like it's this great thing. You can get your, it's total game changer for me. And I was thinking about, this is my aunt Jane. And she's, she was like that aunt who like, it, cause we are not a family of fashionable people in any sense of the word. But my Aunt Jane always looked good. Like at every family gathering, I was like, she always looks amazing. What is the secret, you know? Lo and behold, it was that she knew her colors. She always dressed her colors, period, the end. And she always looked glowing. So anyway, that's when I kind of began the search. And it took me like two or three months to find somebody who still did it. It had just fallen out of trend for whatever reason. And there wasn't really a training available or anything. So um yeah, I mean, very grateful to her too, even though at the time I was slightly offended. <laughs> I was like, she's basically telling me I look bad. <laughs> well, she's stopping but, you from looking bad when you're shopping. Yeah, you know what? It yeah. was constructive. It was constructive. Yeah. <laughs> totally. So what, a, what a wonderful and strange circular path to where you are now. Yeah, totally. 
And then the, the color analysis itself, I remember was, it was just so much more than I expected it to be. I thought it was going to be like, oh, these are the colors you look prettiest in, period. But I felt like it really sort of revived my spirit. Like, I feel like color is very, very powerful, you know, and that's why people are so drawn to like great works of art that are colorful and photography that's really colorful. I feel like there's something in us that just recognizes the extraordinary beauty that is like the endless colors in our life. And when I sat down that day to get my colors done, I felt like it was so much more than I expected. Like, I felt like it just it brought a piece of me back to life. Like it, there was this one red that she put on me and it was so vibrant and it was so sort of such a powerful color. It was like this intense tomato red that I had never worn in my life. And I was like, whoa, like it almost brought me to tears. I was like, this is, I want this vibrancy back. You know what I mean? I want this vibrancy back in my life. And I hear that from a lot of women that it is sort of a transformative experience in some ways it confirms what they already knew, but sort of didn't trust themselves in knowing. Like I find a lot of women when they get their colors done, they're like, I think these are the colors I've always loved. And they felt like they feel this gut reaction, like they love these colors. But, you know, we get all these messages over our lives. That's like, Oh, like, you know, I wore this bright blue and somebody said, you look great in that color. Maybe it's one of my great colors, even though I don't necessarily feel an affinity for it, you know, but, but when it comes down to it, like people might just love the color. They might not love it on you. I find that happens a lot. You know, they might love the bright pop of color, not so much like how it reflects on your unique beauty. But I, but I hear all the time stories of like, oh my, my house is all decorated in these colors, but I don't have them in my closet. You know, you know, I've been picking them in other ways for years, but I don't necessarily wear them, but I want to, you know, so it's really interesting, like what people find. Yeah, for me, I mean, I feel like I've got permission to to pull out colors that I would never have worn before. Yes. Like, for me, I've got this like this super vibrant red, which is what my nails are, and I do my nails this color all the time. Yes. I never, never pick it as, yes. as a top for a dress, right? That's oh gosh, dress. yes. And you, sh- and then, it's so beautiful on you, yeah. And then this yellow, like this, like with going into yes. summer and spring and and all of the the change of seasons, like I cannot wait to rock that like uh, yellow. I love that yellow. It's like saturated canary yellow and it's perfect for you. Yellow is tricky because women are generally, I find freaked out by yellow because mm-hmm. if you pick the wrong yellow, it sort of makes you look sickly. Yeah. Um, it's that color that just kind of brings out the yellow in your skin if it's the wrong shade. And so I find like women are really excited to find a yellow that's very, makes them look really glowing. And that's the one for you. Well, and I I think, you know, my mother was, my mother is blonde hair and blue eyed. So we look nothing alike. Yeah. (laughs) So the person who taught me to dress, the person who taught me to pick out clothes. Yeah. You know, was picking out colors that looked great for her in a lot of cases. So I've kind of had to learn and unlearn and, all of this stuff, but to have this guide and know that I'm going to be good when I, when I go to the store and try and try and find clothes, which is something that I hate, yeah. but now I'm all of a sudden excited to do, which is very yeah. strange. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's a totally freeing experience for shopping. I get this feedback all the time because, you know, it's like there is freedom in constraints. Mm-hmm. You know, there is such freedom in constraints and kind of going, okay, these are the colors I'm looking for because I know they're going to look great. I know they're going to look great every time. I know even if I wake up feeling a little bit like, ugh, this color is going to make me glow. And then the other part of it is when you're shopping, it's like you can go into a store and you can just ignore so much of what's in there and it takes the overwhelm out. And for me, that's been huge because Like I just, there's so much black in the store. I cannot wear black. It drains all the color from my face. I'm not like you. I cannot do the black. I just ignore all the black. I'd never look at black anymore. Never, never, never. I'd never look at gray. I know it's not going to do anything for me, you know? So there are very few colors that are actually off limits. Like most people have a shade of every color. Like you have that one yellow that you really will wear well, but like other yellows on you are not going to be so good. I've tried them all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So it's so great to just walk in knowing exactly what you're looking for. And then everything you take into the dressing room, you know, you're going to look good in like color wise, it's going to be good. Then you can decide about like style shape, you know, which is this is the other part of dressing. Well, you know, if you really break it down, it's about color and it's about shape and that's it. Once you have those two things figured out, you're good to go, you know? So it's so nice to kind of be able to X things out color wise. Excellent. Well, I, it was a wonderful experience for me. If you guys are Good. interested, um, go to yourcolorguru.com and uh, get a session done. It's so, it's such a neat experience. And I, I'm really, really glad that, that I had the opportunity and I really appreciate it because it, it's so cool. I'm so glad too. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jeannie, for being on the show. Uh, YourcolorGuru.com. Go check her out. Awesome. Thank you, Anne. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye.